بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبي وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا صل على محمد وآل محمد أما بعد فقد قال أمير المؤمنين علي عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتمها أما بعد فإن الله لم يقسم جباري دهر قط إلا بعد تمهيل تمهيل ورخاء ولم يجبر عظم أحد من الأمم إلا بعد أزل وبلاء وفي دون ما استقبلتم من عتب وما استدبرتم من حطب مقتبرا وما كل ذي قلب بلبيب ولا كل ذي سمع بسميع ولا كل ناظر ببصير وصدق أمير المؤمنين علي عليه السلام اللهم صل على محمد Muhammad. This khutbah, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallamullah alayhi, talks about some of the things we do as a humans, as a people. But before he started the khutbah, he talks about some of the rules of Allah among humans. In other words, how does Allah's rule works among humans? The first thing Imam Ali mentioned, he says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَقْسِمْ جَبَّارِي دَهْرٌ قَدْ He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of his custom is that Allah never at any point punishes a tyrant unless after a lot of chances. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish a person just because they did something wrong immediately. You know? That's not the custom of Allah. And here he mentioned about Zalim, Jabbar. Here, first I want us to understand what is the meaning of Al Jabbar or Zalim, in other words, tyrant, a person who crossed the line of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our, according to our scholars and Quran as well, there are three kinds of dhulm, injustice in this life. The worst injustice is called dhulmullah. To do justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can a person or a human do injustice to Allah? Yes. And Allah said in the Quran too. That we as a human, because here we have to understand what is the injustice. Many times when we think about injustice, we think a stronger one oppresses the weaker ones. He is stronger, he oppresses the weaker one. That's injustice. No. Sometimes a weaker one can also do injustice. And you can see, many times, even in the families, a woman who is considered weaker compared to a man, how many women do injustice to their husbands? Even though they are weaker ones. Right? Now you come to Islam. Islam tells us that the first and the worst injustice is to do injustice to Allah. And Allah mentioned that in Surah Al-Luqman, where he tells us what kind of injustice we can do to Allah. And Allah said that injustice is to do a shirk with Allah. That is the worst shirk, you, the worst Injustice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go to the Quran. Allah talks about by Prophet Luqman and his son. He said, Ya bunayya la tushrik billah. My son, do not associate Allah with anything. Do not partnership with Allah in anything. 
And then he said, Inna shirka. Because indeed, a shirk is la dhulmun azim. It's a dhulm, injustice. But to whom? To Allah. Because shirk is to whom? If Allah. When we associate something in our ibadah with Allah, it's a shirk. And that shirk is an injustice to Allah. And he says, shirk and azim is the greatest sin one can commit. So that is the first shirk. And that is the first injustice. Then you come to the second one, which is called Dhulmul Ghayr. Is to do injustice to someone else. Either it's a human being or it can be anybody else. And the human beings, which is called Dhulmul Ghayr, to do injustice, to oppress someone. Sometimes a person can be a leader, a government, oppressing his people. That is one. No, sometimes it can come even lower than that. And injustice can take a place when a person is the manager of a company and he oppresses his workers. Sometimes he come in an even smaller group, a family, a husband can do injustice to his wife and children. Sometimes now a person, he doesn't have a family, but he does injustice to animals. And that is also one of the injustice too. Because sometimes, well, unfortunately, some people think it's okay to be cruel to animals. No. That also is considered an injustice. That is why Imam Ali, when he talks about injustice, he said, Law If I am to be given seven continents of the world, Allah an in return, I have to pull a wing of a bug. Just a wing. They say, I wouldn't do it. Because there is injustice for that animal. I wouldn't do that. Imam Ali. An animal. He said, I wouldn't do that. So in Islam, we are not supposed to be injustice to animals too. You go to the Quran. You see Prophet Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. When he was coming and the ant spoke. What did the ant say? He said, Ya masakinakum la yahtimannakum Sulaiman that's the injustice. So it's very important. We have to understand that those animals, those who live also, they have the right to live and we have no right to do injustice to those animals. And that's when you go to Islam. Islam even go deeper how to deal with the animals. Islam say, yes, you're allowed to slaughter animals. But even when you come to slaughter them, Islam say there are rules and regulations. I have two animals to slaughter. They said, you should not let the other animal to see while you're slaughtering the first one. I slaughtered the first one. The first one, the, the, the first one, the second one, did you see it? Islam said, be careful. The second animal as you slaughter, do not use the same knife bloody where the second animal sees the blood of the first animal. Clean it before you do. Look at these little things. Then Islam goes to deep to tell you that the, the knife that you use, make sure that that knife is sharp so the animal doesn't suffer during the process of slaughter. All of this is the mercy of Islam so that we don't become oppressors towards the animals. Now, all of this form is called dhulmul ghayr. Any form of injustice, whether it's to humans or whether to animals, is all considered injustice and it's called dhulmul ghayr. The third one, is called dhulmun nafs. A person can do dhulm to himself. When? Whenever we commit any kind of sin, it's dhulmun nafs. Injustice to the self. Now you go to the Quran. Prophet Adam alayhi salam, after he ate the tree, which Allah told him not to, when he wanted to make dua, what did he say? He said, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Ya Allah, we have done injustice. But to whom? To ourselves. Wa in lam takfir lana, wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasrin. Ya Allah, we have done injustice to ourselves. So an injustice can happen to ourselves and to others and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in any kind of this injustice, whether it's to Allah or to another humans or animals or to the self, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he will not punish a person immediately after they do injustice. Allah said, we give you a chance, a time. And he mentioned in the Quran, 
ولا تحسبن الله غافلا عما يعمل الظالمون الله said do not think that Allah is not aware about what the oppressors are doing Allah if you are aware why are you not punishing them then he brings the reason he said إنما the reason is إنما يؤخرهم he gives them a chance some of them might regret and repent some of them might, reg might not regret and continue until the time they deserve the punishment of Allah. Then Allah punishes them at the right time. But one bottom line is any oppression, oppressor or any kind of injustice, Allah does not immediately punish the person. He gives us a time. Now how, what, what time? And how, and Allah, how does Allah give us a time? Number one. One of the chances that Allah gives Every day in our life is another chance to repent and make yesterday and today to become better than yesterday. Every oppression. I oppressed yesterday. Allah gave me a life today. Now today is a chance to repair the damage of yesterday. If I don't, Allah might give me the next day. Also, when the next day comes, it's also another opportunity to repent and repair the damage that was done in the past. But unfortunately, not most, but most of us use that opportunity. That is one of the chances of Allah. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in the Quran, another chance, when you read the Quran, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about people who were oppressors and how did Allah deal with them. That's another warning from Allah. That be careful. There have been some nations some individuals who lived on this planet and they were oppressors, they did injustice, and this is how we dealt with them. And you are not different than them if you follow their path. So you can change. That is true. Number three, you come to our ahimma ahlil bayt alayhim salam. Constantly they tell us, be careful of being unjust. In any form, don't be unjust. And one of the hadith, the Prophet says, in one of the meaning of the hadith, that be careful to become unjust because I found that Allah curses those who are unjust. You go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah la'natullahi ala al-zalimin. La'an. Curse of Allah upon those who do injustice, any kind of injustice. Huh? So here Imam Ali alayhi salam in the khutbah, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not break the neck of any unruly tyrant in the world except other uh, except after allowing time and the opportunity for that person allah gives us chance every time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a life is a chance so we can repent so we can go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can do that we can repair the damages then he says also, the second part, Imam Ali says, وَلَمْ يُجْبِرْ عَذْمَ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْأُمَمِ إِلَّا بَعْدَ عَزْلٍ وَبَلَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also did not join the broken bone of any people, any ummah, until he did not inflict calamities and disperse. Any ummah, any nation, any community or society that ever existed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish them either unless he send them messages. You know what the people of Salah alayhi salam, people of Prophet Lut alayhi salam, people of Prophet Hud alayhi salam, people of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, people and all of those that Allah mentioned in the Quran, they lived their life, they did the wrong things, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them warnings after warning. If they didn't listen, then the punishment comes. If they listen, if they're smart, like the people of Yunus. They were smart. And they are the one of the ummah who were very smart and exception in the Quran. When they did what they did to Prophet Yunus, and Prophet Yunus left them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the punishment. The sent the punishment was coming. When they saw it, immediately they ran. And they did tawbah. And Allah says, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمْ Then we uncover that punishment. Other nations, like Prophet Hud alayhi salam, like Prophet Salah alayhi salam, Prophet Lut alayhi salam, these people were not smart. 
They saw the punishment, they keep ignoring. They saw the signs, they keep ignoring. Right? Now let me give you an example. Like when you drive a car, this car was created these days like a human being. Right? The moment something is wrong in the engine, there is engine check light comes up. It's a warning, right? Let's check your light. Check something. If something is wrong. If I keep ignoring and ignoring and ignoring, and then someday the car breaks down on 40, uh, 495, who is to be blamed? Oh, the line was came. The light came. The, all the signs came. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a signals. Be careful. Be careful. But most of us, we don't pay attention to it. Until the punishment comes. But the smartest people, they always take that advantage. And that is what Imam Ali tells us in Najul Balaga too, where he talks about muhasaba, self-accountability. Before I go to bed, I have to account myself. See what I've done. How much did I damage? Who did I hurt all day long? Who did I help? Did I do something to please Allah? Did I do something to, to displease Allah? Then the night should not go until I wake up and repent to Allah and promise Allah that Ya Allah, the next day will be better than yesterday. Ya Allah, if yesterday I did not pray on time, today, inshallah, my salat will be on time. If yesterday I hurt someone, I will ask their forgiveness. And today I will make sure that I put happiness and smiley face on someone today. That is how a person is supposed to progress. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, no nation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever joined. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never also joined the broken bone of any people. And that is also one thing to, to learn that every nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never change them unless they try to change themselves. If a nation is going through something, they have to start to think about how to change themselves. And then when they initiate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps them and support them. To Imam Ali alayhi salam, he tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not join any broken bone of any people or ummah until he did not inflict calamities and distress upon them. And then he said even less than what suffering and misfortunes have yet fall upon, upon you or have already befallen you are enough for giving lessons. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends some kind of things on our way to be a lesson. A lot of things happen in our life for a reason. You know, there is one beautiful hadith of Qudsi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he says, my servant who happened to be sinners, committing sins. He said, if they realize and they come back and ask forgiveness, he said, I forgive them. If they don't, what do I do? He said, I put trials in their life, maybe they might wake up. He said, I put some things in their life, just to, like when somebody is deep asleep and you want them to wake up, sometimes you call their name. They don't wake up. Sometimes you go there and you push them a lot. They don't wake up. What happened? Then you have to hit them harder to wake them up. When we do certain things in life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He comes and brings certain things in our life. Sometimes it can be some difficulty. Sickness can be one of them. It's a wake up call. Sometimes somebody's death in the family is a wake up for call for you. Sometimes, no, lose a job, losing a son, losing something. It's a wake up. So that you can reflect and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your way. So you can go back and see things as they're supposed to be. So everything that happened in our life, we should start to reflect. Why did this happen? It could be a test. And any test that Allah put you into, they have to be a reason. And what is the reason? They said there are two reasons. One reason is, sometimes certain problems comes in my life because of my own actions. مَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ 
فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever any tragedy is, most of the time, when tragedy comes in your life, they say because of your actions. Sometimes, no. Sudden musibah comes, not because of your action, it's because of the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because a person, the moment your iman increases, your test also goes up. Your musibah comes up too. So the same thing. So sometimes when these things happen in our life, we have to go back and think, is it because of my action or is it a test? But whatever the case is, it should be a cause to run to Allah, not to run away from Allah. Because sometimes certain difficulties comes, instead of running to Allah, we run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah said in the Quran, Fafirru ila Allah. Run to Him, not away from Allah subhanahu wa that is what Imam Ali says. He says, sometimes things happen in our life and they are lessened for us. And Imam Ali says, however, what is the saddest thing? He says, وَمَا كُلُّ ذِي قَلْبٍ بِلَبِيبٍ Imam Ali السلام, says, every man with a heart is not intelligent. Not every person that Allah given aql is using the aql to understand. That this is a lesson. And Imam Ali said one of the hadiths also. Ma akthru al-ibar wa aqallu al-mu'tabirin. So there is a lot of lessons. But very few people take that lessons. And put it into practice. Imam Ali said the same thing. He said there's a lot of people. Allah gave them aql. But not many people use that aql for their own benefit. And then he said, not only that, he said, وَلَا كُلُّ سَمِيعٍ وَلَا كُلُّ ذِي سَمْعٍ بِسَمِيعٍ Not every person that has been given the ears to listen uses that ears to listen. You know, some people, first of all, they don't want even to listen. And Quran talks about them in Surah Nuh. Surah Nuh, Allah talks about His people. When Prophet Nuh comes to tell them about Allah and tell them about wrongdoings, Quran says, "Kullama da'awtuhum ja'alu asabi'ahum fi adhanihim." They put their fingers in their ears, so they don't even hear what Prophet Yunus, uh, Prophet Nuh, alayhi salam, tells them. That's one group of people. Some people know they don't even come to the masjid, they don't come to the center, so they don't want to hear what what they do. They don't want to hear it. I have to close to the fire to feel the heat, right? If I'm not close to the fire, can I heat? Can I feel the heat? No. I'm not going to the center. I'm not going to the masjid so that I would not hear what? I don't want to hear. No, some people know. They will go closer. They will less hear it. But what happened? It's never going to stick in the mind. The Quran says, لَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا They have ears, but they don't hear what they have eyes, but they don't use it to see it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about these people. Imam Ali mentioned them. They have ears where they can listen, but they don't use it for that matter. And then he says, وَلَا كُلُّ نَاظِرًا بِبَصِيرٍ And here, amazing, the word of Imam Ali. Here. See, when the wording that he used also is a lesson for it. See, when he says, وَلَا كُلُّ ذِي قَلْبَ الْقَلْبَ in Arabic means heart. Right? اللبيب from the word لب is different. الْقَلْبَ everybody has قَلْب. Every human being has a قَلْب. But not every human being has a لب. الْقَلْب you have to have it to live. But the qalb is there to use it to think and make the right decisions. Not everybody thinks. The hearing, as sama everybody has ears. You can hear. But the Imam said, bisamir. As samir means a person who listens and hears what you say. Imam says, they have the object of hearing, but they're not using it to hear. Then he goes to the last one. He said, Wala bi kulli nadharan bi basir. In Arabic, al-basar, another are two things. Another is to look. Al-basar, al-basir, is to see something as they supposed to be. Let me give you an example. When you put a cane or a stick, 
and the cup of water. When you look at it, based on that stick being in the middle of the water, your eyes says it's like broken. That's called another. But Al Basir tells you what? No, it's not broken. It's just covered by water. Now, what gives you the understanding beyond what you see is called Basira. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, many people can see, but they don't have the Basira to see beyond what they see. Allah. And this one, when you go to the Quran, Quran confirms the same thing. That Imam Allah, Allah Imam, Imam Zayn al Abidin, salam Allah alayhi. When he says, when Allah created every person, Allah gave them four eyes. Every human being. The moment we created, we have four eyes. Then you ask, where? He said, Allah gave us aynan yubsiru bihima amra dunya. Two eyes to see the world, to see humans, to see buildings, to see other things. Then he said, wa aynan. And then an extra eyes Allah gave. And that eyes is to see things beyond what they are. And then he says, those two eyes to see this wall. He said, that eye can work. But the one in the heart, he said, that can be affected by the sins and can be blocked. And he quoted the ayah in the Quran. He says, وَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارْ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبَ الَّتِي فِي الصُّلُوبِ Certain actions, it might not make these eyes blind, but it can make the eyes of the heart blind. A person can be drinking, can be stealing, can be backbiting, and he still can see. But the heart, the eyes becomes blocked. And when it becomes blocked, a person cannot see anything. <clears throat> now the bottom line, Imam Ali wants to tell us two important messages in this one. The first one is, whatever we do, we should make sure that we have time to reflect. If it's a bad thing, immediately repent and reconcile with Allah SWT. Because there will be a time or a day will come that opportunity will not longer be on the table. Today when you go to the graveyard, people who already passed, they wish they have this opportunity. But it's gone. Someday it will be our turn. So if somebody wants to tell us that, if I'm oppressing my wife, oppressing people at my work, oppressing animals, any kind of oppression, I say be careful and take advantage and repair the damage that already been done. That is the first lesson. The second lesson, every organ in your body was given to you for a reason. The eyes was given for a reason. The ears was given for a reason. And so as every part of your body. Make use them Use them in the way that Allah wants you to use. The eyes should be seen as Allah wanted, and the eyes and the legs should be utilized in the same way as well. Otherwise, a day will come, we all will be standing in front of Allah to answer the reason and how these things were used. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to use them in the right way, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I just want to share something and ask you if this is a correct way of thinking. Um, when you said how do we know about asthma, like if it is a test or it's a calamity on us. Yes. Uh, I remember hearing someone saying that uh, if it's a test, it should bring closer, uh, it should bring you closer to Allah. And if it is an azab, then it will bring you uh, farther away from Allah. So just, just if you if you want to know if it is an azab, if you should see if you are getting away from Allah. Is that a correct uh, way of? At some point, it can, you know, in either way, whether it's an, as a uh, punishment of Allah for our sins or it's a test, they both are a chance to always get closer to Allah. 
Because when, even if we commit sin and we are being tested by Allah for our own sin, it's another way Allah wants to wake us up to see the right thing and do the right thing. Or even if it's a test, it's also another way to also bring us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either way, right? But sometimes in most cases, people don't realize it. And instead of using that to become closer to Allah, some people use it to even distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very unfortunate. But either way should be a way that I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So my question is, um, during the khutbah you said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish anyone unless they are, unless they are given time to maybe either repent or right. to go through the custom of Asit Raj. So uh, the best example that I can think of is Ibn Muljam, where Imam Ali knows that someday eventually Ibn Muljam will uh, kill him. But because he hasn't done that sin yet, Imam never punished him. Um, so uh, my question here is that in the story of Khizr and Musa, mm -hmm. the second part when there was the child who Khizr killed him, he said that because in the future he will, I don't remember exactly what he will done, but yeah. it He's wasn't. Died. Yes, yes. So uh, this child hasn't done that scene yet that deserve such a punishment to wow. be killed. And besides, if, um, I'm just saying what, why there were, this alternative wasn't considered. If, for example, he was to be um, a sinner when he grew up, why not make him die, for example, for, from something natural, like a disease, or why, to, why make Khiz do that, not by any natural causes? Okay. No, the answer is this. First of all, like we mentioned, it's the custom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that any person who commits sins, Allah gives them a chance. You look at even shaitan. Shaitan, as an example, after he refused to bow down when Allah gave an order, Allah didn't punish him immediately. The first thing what Allah did was to ask him a question. مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ What stops you? from prostration after I ask you to do it. That's a chance Allah has given him, right? Then he says, خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ So he was given excuses. So even shaitan, Allah gave him a chance. Now, coming to the question about what you said about Khidr, there is no, there is no doubt that in the custom of Allah, no person will be punished before they commit sin. And Allah mentioned the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبَعْثَ رَسُولًا We never punish any person until we send the message to them. Meaning, they commit the sin, they have the chance, and they fail to use it. Now, going back to Khidr, Khidr, what happened with Khidr in that situation was absolutely exception. It's not a rule, it's an exception. That's why when you go to the story of Khidr and the whole thing that happened, you see the way he put it was three different stages. The first stage, when he broke that boat, he says, فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعِبَهَا I wanted to make a hole in that. I wanted. Good. When he go to the building the wall, he says, فَأَرَدْنَا me and my Lord, we both wanted to rebuild the wall. When it come to the killing of the child, your Lord wanted. So it's a wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he did. It's not Khidr himself who chose to do that. So when you look at the three stages, one was his own choice. Two, he said, me and Allah. Third, he said, no, this is the will of Allah. So killing that boy was an, a completely an exception. It's not a rule that every person, if I know this person will do something, I can go, no, 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 you cannot. 
What happened there was absolutely Allah wanted to teach something. What happened? Only Allah knows. But Khidr did by doing what Allah asked him to do. Now, when you go to the tafsir, what tafsir mentioned is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he made Khidr to kill that child, Allah replaced him with another child. And that child who was replaced became a father of 70 prophets. Allah took one child and he gave them a beautiful and so much children who became prophets, 70 prophets from that same family, right? So the bottom line is whatever happened with Khidr is an exception. It's not a rule that one can say it applies all the time. This is just in a situation what meant to be like that for a reason only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.